<laughs> and welcome to worship. We're glad that you are here today. We're glad that we can celebrate the Lord's Day together. This is the day the Lord has made. Today we have a speaker from Gideon's, a little bit, Dale Hemstra. He'll tell us about their ministry and what the Bibles are doing in people's lives around the world. You'll see a bulletin insert that you can take home with you and read about it. There's also an offering plate at the back of the church if you'd like to donate today. So there's two options to give to Gideon. We'll have our regular offering later after the sermon. The peace of Christ be with you. Now you may greet one another in the peace of the Lord. Share the peace of Christ.
Good morning. Good morning. My name is Katie Herring. Please stand as you are able and join me in our call to worship. You can find it in your bulletin. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into God's presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to God with songs of praise. Please remain standing and join in singing our opening song, He Has Made Me Glad, on page 2270 of The Faith We Sing. children up for children's moments. Maybe. 
How do we need, what do we go to when we need directions? Uh, a map. A map, yes. <laughs> yes. Something nice about the GPS, we can just tell it where to go and then it talks to us along the way, like get in the right lane, get in the left lane, go to this exit. And so that helps to have GPS. It also helps to have a Bible. So you can look at this, it has some pictures in here. Different people in the Bible. This one is who's who in the New Testament. So you can look at this one. It's not the Bible, but some stories. <laughs> some stories in the Bible. And it's good to take our Bibles with us, especially on vacation or somewhere. When we're not at home, it's good to have a Bible with us. This one is actually placed by the Gideons, so it's one that you're helping share. And as we give to Gideons, we also help share. But people can read these and find out about Jesus, find out some help. It has different places to go. If you're feeling different ways, you can look up different scriptures. So it helps us a lot. It helps that way God can speak to us through the Bible. And you know what? God always gives us just what we need. And as I talk today, we talk about the Bible being our GPS. That's our best guide. Let's pray. Well, God, we thank you for these children and young people of our church. We thank you for them and all that they are learning about you. And we ask you to bless them, bless their families, continue to bless our Wednesday night program. And God, we thank you so much for the Bible that is your precious word. In your name we pray. Amen. Thanks for coming up. Thank you.
need this little extra stuff. <laughs> No, we're fine. We're fine. Thank you, Pastor Connie. Thank you, church. Uh, thank you for inviting us here. I really appreciate it. The Gideons appreciate it. You know, for a moment, I was kind of nervous. And then you guys sang that song, Servant's Heart. And I sat there and listened to that and going, isn't that what we all should be? Servant's Hearts. Thank you. I don't know, did that get picked out because the Gideons were here? Or did that get God, yeah. God was here. We had our convention in Iowa City uh, this weekend, and the verse we used for our convention was this, Romans 15, 13. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing. So that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. That's what the Gideons try to do, is abound in hope. I want to tell you about a girl that one night checked into a motel. And they thought it was kind of interesting why she checked in. Because she come in, didn't have any luggage. She checked in and went back to her room. And I'll get back to that in a minute. Gideons, what do we do? <coughs> Most of you, probably 99% of you would say, we hand out Bibles. And that is true. We try to hand out a lot of Bibles. Worldwide, we have passed 2 billion Bibles since the Gideons have started. 2 billion. Uh, and that was back already in 2000, I think 11, that we hit that mark. And so we continue to do that. And that continues to go on and on and on as we continue to give out. Over the convention, we had people tell us that they went on blitzes. A blitz is something that they go to another country and hand out Bibles. Uh, one of them was where there was 15 Gideons and probably another 15, 20 of the local Gideons. And in two weeks, they handed out over 600,000 Bibles. The sad part is this when you did your children's worship. We were in Des Moines to give out Bibles to schools. And we were by one of the big schools in Des Moines. And 1,900 kids they claimed were in there. But today, we can't go ahead and be on their property. So what happens? We stand on the sidewalk, which we legally can do. We gave out only 50 Bibles. It's hard to get close to the school kids anymore to hand out the Bibles. And that's getting tougher all the time. An interesting history of the Gideons in 1956, the Gideons' goal was to have a Bible in every classroom. Think of that, 1956. Some of you remember those as I look over, up. I'm sure you do. But that was their goal. And today, how many Bibles do we have in schools? And that should make our heart, and that's what makes our job greater, is trying to fulfill that. Back to that story of that girl. She went ahead and she checked into that room. And the next morning she came out, and she was holding one of these in a hand. And she was carrying one of these. Anybody know what this is? She was going to go ahead and shoot herself in that motel room. But she found the Bible, and she come back out, and she laid that gun on the counter and said to the clerk, I don't need this anymore. This is an interesting story because only about three or four weeks earlier than that, the Gideons had been there and asked if they could put Bibles in, and that person said no. So what do Gideons do? We prayed about it. We pray. Please open that door. And only about a week before that, they went back and she says, yes, you can put it in. The interesting story is, you know who that woman was? The mother of that girl. That girl wanted to kill herself in her mother's motel room for some point, for whatever reason that was. So that's why we need to really get these into motels. I have a story of another hotel that right in Orange City, most of you people know Orange City were a pretty religious area. And the new motel said, no, we couldn't put them in there. 
And so we go ahead and we start praying about that one also. And after a few weeks, he finally said, yes, we could go ahead and bring those Bibles in. And we bring them into a room. We set them all out. We have prayer over every Bible. And then we go about putting motel into each room in the drawer. And two Gideons go in and they pray over that Bible again as it goes into that room. We got up to the last floor, the last room, and the last two Gideons went in and prayed on that one. And the manager then says, could you guys all come in here? I remember he's the one that said no. Come in there. And he says, I want to pray for you. And I think that's really quite something when first he didn't want it, and now he felt led to pray for us as we were doing this. And so it does get to be that. Once in a while, when we hand out Bibles, people go, yeah, but do they all get read? They probably get thrown in the trash. We know that. There's probably some. But the good Lord is in charge of that. This is a, a little thing from someone that has found one. I became a drug supplier to dealers in over a dozen states. And I ended up in a federal prison. Walking around the, jail, the cell block, I passed by a garbage can. And something caught my eye. A Gideon New Testament. I took it back to my cell and read the entire Gospel of Mark that night. God convinced me and he called me into his full-time ministry. I don't know where all the millions of scriptures have gone, but I know where one has gone and it landed in my hand. And it was that scripture that began the journey for me to the life of obedience to Christ. So once in a while, they get thrown in for a reason that they can go that way. Have a, just basically right now, a year ago, we had our convention down in Kansas City, our uh, Omaha area, Council Bluffs. As I walked into the church, a man by the name of Gary met us. Very, hey, he was happy to be there, and we were happy to be there. <coughs> and talked to him for a little bit, and those things. And the other side is, is uh, I said, well, is the pastor here? And I was coming to do a presentation like this for maybe 10 minutes. And the lady says, uh, no, you're the pastor today. I didn't laugh. I didn't laugh. All of a sudden, I'm going, okay, what am I going to do here? But anyway, I started doing some of the same thing I'm doing right now. And the next thing I knew was 25 minutes was gone. And so we closed. And Gary come up to my wife, who was sitting in the audience, and started telling his story to her. And she says, as soon as he was done, I said to him, you got to go tell Dale that. Seven years prior to that, he was alcohol. He was in the hospital, terrible health issues, everything else going on. And a Gideon walked through the hospital, handed him a Bible. And when he got that Bible, he read it. And to that day, he'd attended that church for seven years, every Sunday. And he just... To say he's had a health issue, he was really in good shape and really going around. So it's interesting to do that. When I say about these blitzes, this was only two years ago in Africa that they were busy handing out Bibles to kids there. And this is interesting if you've never seen this. We walk around, like I said, at a school and try to give them out and stand out again. You go to Africa and the kids will line up. They're all saying, please give me a Bible, please give me a Bible, please. And anyway, they're busy lining kids up to come by to get a Bible. And this gentleman's saying, you're a son of the king. You're a daughter of the king. And he was doing that. And pretty soon this girl comes and says, you're a daughter of the king. And she kind of stepped back. You are a daughter of the king. And she stepped back. Him. And then the next time he said it more forceful yet, and she grabbed it out of his hand, and right there she fell right on the ground, went into fetal, and just started shaking and almost in convulsions. The guys there said they stepped around her and prayed for her, and pretty soon she got up and left. About a week later, they come by that same school and they asked how she was doing, and they said she's a totally changed girl. And this happened in Africa. 
Uh, another place in Africa, they were busy going, and a guy comes to him and says, you got to come to my school and hand out Bibles. And he says, well, how far is it? And as they told us this convention, there's no road maps, no GPS out there, nothing. It's just flat and you go. And so he says, oh, it's just a little ways that way. He says, after about two hours of riding in the dust and dirt, all of a sudden they could see it looked like a building over there. Now, they hadn't seen hardly anybody, no houses, no nothing. They get to the building and says, we have Bibles for the kids. And all of a sudden, they had 800 kids there in those buildings. And you go, where do they come from? But they are so eager to get the Bible that they will stand in line, get it, say thank you. Um, it, it's unbelievable. And so that's the kind of stuff we try to do. I'm also happy because I, I won't say I stole it because I'll put it back, <laughs> but a Gideon card. I see you have a rack in the back in your library there. These are very helpful also. If you have somebody that you, hopefully you guys are using these uh, because they're uh, uh, a great way to give something that is going to live on and on and on. Um, the idea is we give a lot of these out, we try to give them out, uh, we write a lot of these to people in mourning and people thinking of you, et cetera, et cetera. So continue to use these. If you haven't, if you haven't seen them, take a look at them because they're very, very handy. So um, with that, it's, it's just a, a pleasure to be here. Uh, I'll be here uh, after church. If you have questions, please come up to me. If you have a servant's heart, it would be interested in being a Gideon. Um, we are all getting older, and we need to get more Gideons to help us to go ahead and make this journey, to go ahead and fulfill this, so that we can get Bibles in the hands of many, many people. So if you want to come and talk to me afterwards, I'll be here. I'll be here for the second service. So I will gladly talk to you about uh, anything the Gideons that you may have. So with that, thank you very much, Pastor Connie. And uh, thank you for the offering in advance of whatever that may be. Thank you. Please join me in our prayer for illumination. You can find it in your bulletin. <coughs> Blessed Lord, you have caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning. Grant us to hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life, which you have given us in our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Stand if you are able and join me for the Gospel reading. John 17, 13 through 21, found on page 880 in the Pew Bible. But now I am coming to you, and I speak these things in the world, so that they may have my joy made complete in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I am not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from evil, from the evil one. They do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in the truth, your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, so that they also may be sanctified in truth. I ask not only on behalf of these, but also on behalf of those who will believe in me through your, their word, that they may all be one. As you, Father, are in me, I am in you. May they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please remain standing and join in singing, Break Thou the Bread of Life on page 599 of the United Methodist Hymnal. Take it away, Dale.
Let us join our hearts in prayer. Oh God, we thank you for your word. We thank you so much for the many testimonies we've heard already about the Bible and how it's changing people's lives all around the world. Speak to each of us this day what you have for us. Our hearts are open and ready to hear you. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable to you, O oh Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. God's word is our GPS. It's not global positioning satellites, but it's something even better. Because as believers, as Christians, we have a built-in GPS made by God. It's our God-given GPS. In this passage of scripture, may you see and hear that you are very, very loved. God loves you very much, even long before you were born. And the passage that we just read is a part of a prayer that Jesus is praying for us, for his followers then and for us today, his followers today. Your GPS is God's positioning system. Genesis 3.9, God asked a powerful question, and one that demands an answer for each of us even today. It's after Adam and Eve ate the apple. God said, Adam, where are you? Well, God knew perfectly well where Adam was, but he was hiding because he knew he had sinned against God. So it wasn't geographical, it was asking him, where are you spiritually? And God might be asking that to us today, God, asking us, where are you spiritually? Where am I spiritually? Are we fulfilling God's purpose for our lives? Your GPS is God's protection system from Psalms 511. Let all who take refuge in God be glad, let them sing with joy. So God gives us refuge, God gives us protection. Your GPS is God's peace system. We can be amazed how much God loves us. God loves us so very, very much. Sent Jesus to this earth, and Jesus came willingly to give up his life, to sacrifice his life. By the blood he shed, our sins are forgiven. So we are so thankful for what the sacrifice Jesus has made. And Jesus gave us a beautiful gift before he left us physically. He said in John 14, 27, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you, not as the world gives. Let not your heart be troubled, and neither let them be afraid. So your GPS is God's promotion system. Psalm 75, 6, for promotion and power come from God. Our power comes from God. It's also God's possibility system. Matthew 19, 26, as far as possibilities go, everything is possible for the person who believes. Everything is possible for those who believe. Your GPS puts you in the right place at the right time. Just like these stories, the Bible was there at the right place in the right time, and God puts us at the right place and right time. We'll never get lost. As long as you follow instructions from the Bible, our owner's manual. Well, what would you do if your microwave or your lawnmower quit working? Would you look for your owner's manual? Look it up and say, okay, now this is what I need to do, this is how I can fix it. It tells us important things so we can keep those things that we have going and running effectively. It's good to take good care of our cars, isn't it? And if we take good care of them, they usually, hopefully, put, put a lot of miles on them. Not always, but like Ruth has had experience. But when they break down, it's inconvenient always. But hopefully, they will keep going. I bought my Blue Mercury Sable several years ago and had 19,000 miles on it. And I was in the habit of selling my cars with less than 100,000 so they'd be safe on the road. And I decided this one's going to get 100,000 miles. So I took care of it, had the oil change every 3,000 and took good care of it. Because the owner's manual said, change the oil regularly. Well, after I passed the 100,000 mile mark, I said, I want this to go 200,000 miles. <laughs> and it did. And now it has like 278,000 miles on it and I want it to go 300,000 miles. <laughs> Hopefully it will, because I'm taking care of it. My granddaughter wants to buy it eventually, because she wants to use it to get to her job in Cedar Rapids. I wish I'd taken better care of the outside like I took care of the inside, because it got rusty. And with our Iowa winters, with the salt, I didn't get it cleaned off as well. But it still runs, and it does what I need it for. So the Bible is our owner's manual. We take good care of the things that we have. God wants us to take care of our souls, too. Sometimes life gets so busy, but we have to make time to take time for our souls. 
and our Bible is our guide. The Bible was written by scribe after scribe who carefully copied the sacred text word for word, counting the individual letters so it would be translated properly, written down properly. Then a second master came along and counted the words, the letters, I mean, to make sure it was translated properly compared to the first. So copies of the Torah and copies of the Bible have passed down from generation to generation. When people who are historians look at the Bible, they're amazed how accurate it is in history. God's position system, the Bible, can be counted on. It's a vital tool for everyday living. We need the Bible every day. And it's amazing how, when we read the Word of God, how it speaks to us for that day. What we're going to encounter that day, or if we read it at night, what we have encountered that day and experienced, it just really speaks to us. It gives us spiritual insight and wisdom. It reveals divine truths that help us on our way. <coughs> the Bible is a unique collection of 66 books written by numerous authors. And over time, and from their perspective of what they saw and heard and felt, but always the same truth is over and over in the Bible. So the Bible is a tangible GPS for all of us, a map for those who are lost, and gives direction to a confused soul. And I believe no matter how often we read it, we find something new. I know the adult Sunday school class that goes over, that reads the Bible, I think you still find something new. In the Tuesday morning Bible study, reading the scriptures, we still find something new every time. <clears throat> well, do you know where you're going? And do you know how to get there? Plug your GPS into the power source and God will lead you there. <clears throat> if you're feeling lost, God knows exactly where you are. God knows your future. Let God guide your life today and tomorrow. And you'll arrive at your final destination safely. Remember Luke 137, for with God nothing is impossible. God cares what you're going through. You might be going through something you've never gone through before. You might be challenged like you never have before. You might have tried and failed at something, but you got back up again. And you're trying again. And God is going to give you strength to keep going, to keep trying one step at a time, one day at a time. So God believes in you. God needs you to keep reading the Word, to have the Word in you so you can share it with others, and to be the Bible that people don't read. Because so many people do not read the Bible, but they look to us as Christians, and our lives are testimonies to what the Word of God says. Your GPS is God's power system. Acts 1 9 says you'll receive power after the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Then you'll be my witnesses. So God gives us power. And then we'll be God's witnesses. We have power and authority over the enemy. This passage in John 17 is a prayer. And it's a much longer prayer. If you have the red letter edition, you can see how long this prayer is in this Gospel of John. What I wanted to show us from this especially is verse 15. Jesus is praying for his disciples. And he says, protect them from the evil one. They're going out into the world, doing the ministry that he taught them. Farther and farther, they're going out into the world, touching people's lives. Not everybody's happy to hear what they have to say. But he's praying for them, for protection. <clears throat> In 17, he says, sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. We believe that grace is a very important part of our faith. And you've probably heard of these words before, the prevenient grace of God, that God is a part of our lives long before we ever are alive, long before we know that God is even God. God cares about us and calls us to God. And it's a gift. Prevenient grace is a gift. It's always there. There's justifying grace, grace that forgives our sins. I like that because God sees us just as if we had never sinned, the justifying grace. There's also the sanctifying grace that <laughs> Jesus is reading, telling us about today in his prayer. Sanctifying grace, grace that helps us live like Jesus in our world. We are set apart and holy for God's ministry as we are becoming more and more like Jesus. So Jesus is praying for us as we go out into the world too, for power, for strength, for authority blessing us as witnesses in God's word, wherever God's world, wherever God sends us. And Jesus says in verse 20, my prayer is not for them alone, not just for the disciples at that time, 
I also pray for those who will believe in me through their message. And that's all of us and all who believe, that all of them may be one, just as you are in me and I am in you. May they also be in us so the world may believe that you have sent me. So it's important to study God's word. It's important to meditate on God's word. To study God's word together and discuss God's word and learn from others, from one another. It's important to have the word of God in our hearts and to live that word. The goal of being an approved workman should be the goal of all of God's children. And we look to God's word as the psalmist wrote in Psalm 119, 105, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. I know we talked about, about the Bible last Sunday and sang that song last Sunday too, but it's still very important for us today too. That God's word lights our path. Let us pray. Oh God, we thank you so much for your precious and holy word. Guide each of us on the next step you want us to take today. Thank you, God, for loving us, for praying for us, even long before we entered this world. Jesus, thank you for praying for protection over us, to go out and be strong, to go out into the world and love people like you do, to receive your gifts of mercy and grace, and to love one another. Continue to guide us with your light, we pray. Amen. Now it's time to share our joys. <coughs> Yes, Gary. Uh, two joys. The first one is my sister from Colorado. She is a joy. She's been with us for uh, a week. Good to have her back. And then Friday, I took the the time to go over to Herbert Hoover Library and watch 73 people become citizens from, I think there were 25 countries. Really, it was a joy to watch that circle. I had never been involved. I've been around something like that. But it, Oh, that would be awesome. That'd be neat. I'm glad you got to see that. That's neat. And welcome. Yes. Is your sister's name Joy? <laughs> What's your sister's name? Lugine. Lugine. Okay, welcome. Yes. You can call her Beanie. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. I'm glad that each of you are here. It's a joy that Beck is here. Glad you're here. Glad we get to see you. Yes. Yes. Well, thank you, Tom, for that good news, and thank you for giving up your time, too, to take him to Davenport to catch his next ride. Thank you. What a blessing. Yes, it is a joy to see the children here on Wednesday nights from preschool to 12th grade. So we have something for everybody. And I'm so thankful for all of our volunteers because it takes a lot of volunteers, a lot of people, to make it happen. So if you're lonely on Wednesday nights, come out and join us. <laughs> you can help, I'm sure, in many ways. And also there's a good meal as well. And it's good to have children with us, so many little ones today. We're glad that you're here today with your families. And our prayers, let's... Yes? Just can't yeah. go past that without saying one of my biggest joys is Pamela Joy because oh. she's been with me for two weeks and, and Nathan and his fiance are headed back to Colorado this morning. 
to find joy in the midst of so much loss. I just can't imagine it. But thank you to them, and thank you to all of you. Oh, well, thank you, Bev. Thank you. Yes. Bev just lost her husband who had his funeral a week ago. But that's a blessing as Christians, isn't it? To find joy in the midst of loss and sorrow and a blessing from family to church family as well. Yes. Let's keep Gina and Ron Cousins in our prayer and their families because Gina's at the Cancer Treatment Center in Chicago and family, well, the kids are traveling back and forth. They need our prayers. Audrey Kofod needs our prayers. And all of those at Crestview and all those on our prayer list. John Ross needs our prayers. He was here Monday night to help Jody with the technology to show us how to make bed mats out of grocery sacks, plastic grocery sacks. So we're thankful that he's doing better. Do you have people to remember in our prayers today? Well, last week he had a pinched nerve. Is, does he still? Still. Mm, that's too bad. We will keep him in our prayers. Mm-hmm. Anyone else remember in our prayers today? Let's pray for the family of Vivian Howard. Her service was here Thursday, and all these beautiful flowers, so thank God for Vivian, thank God for Ed Spencer, and for Phyllis, Phyllis Sondergaard, so our church has gone through a lot just recently, in a few weeks, so we pray for our congregation as well. We also pray for our nation and our world. Let us bow for silent prayer. God, you are an awesome God. We thank you so much for being our God, for being our creator, our redeemer, and our sustainer, for loving us so very, very much, for giving us your mercy and grace. God, I thank you for each person that's a part of the service today, for each person that is here, from the littlest, for all ages, we thank you. It's a joy to hear these children and to see them. Thank you, God, that Becca is here. And the Gideons are here today. We thank you, God, for the Christian Discipleship Program that started two weeks ago on Wednesday nights. Having so many little ones from preschool to high school in our church. And so many volunteers that make this happen because they love the children. Bless them as they learn. Bless us as we serve. God, we thank you for our football team and for all the teams that we have that are practicing so hard and working hard in school as well. We ask you to bless our children and youth. We thank you that Gary's sister is here. We ask you to bless her. And for the special service of the Gary saw of people becoming citizens of the United States. What a blessing that was. We thank you that Tom is here and report on his servant heart of helping a man we didn't know but had no way to get to Davenport to get to his train ride. And how Tom ministered to him and met his need. We also thank you for family, that family and friends, for Bev having Cammie Joy and Nathan and his fiance with her these past days, for the joy they find even in the midst of loss. Thank you for giving them hope. And God, we reach out to those we ask you to pray, we ask you to touch the lives of those we, on our hearts that we lift up, Gina and Ron, and Audrey Kofod, and all those at Crestview and on our prayer list for John Roth, for Bob Cummings, for healing his pinched nerve. For each one, God, we ask for your touch. For those who are grieving the loss of loved ones, for Vivian Howard's family, Ed Spencer's family, and Phyllis Sondergaard's family, continue to minister to them and touch them. God, we pray for our world and for our nation, for peace, for your guidance, for your wisdom, for people to seek you and find you. And 
Now we pray as Jesus taught his first disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Oh, Jesus, bless me. Let's prepare to give our tithes and offerings and gifts of love to the Lord. You can find it in your bulletin. God, we give you joy into your kingdom today. May you bless our offering and work through these gifts. Extend your love through us, we pray. Amen. Please join in singing our closing song, Thy Word, found on page 601 of the United Methodist Hymnal. The
have this blessing from Numbers, one of the first blessings in, that's recorded in the Bible. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face and give you peace, now and forever. Amen.